When the things you seek have been lost to time, look no further. We can go get them. We're Murphy's Inc. Murphy's Inc. is not responsible for any time paradoxes, historical retaliations, or other risks related to the delivered artifact. Any questions regarding the company's liability or tax information will be answered in time. Last time on Murphy's Inc., Daphne the Librarian and Intern 2 made the jump to 1258 CE in Baghdad for a visit to the House of Wisdom. While there, Daphne and Intern 2 had a bit of a, shall we say, blowout, while the Librarian decided to go take a walk, where she ended up getting into a bit of a debate. Back at HQ, Philippe appears to be on the mend. Isaac made a call that will likely cost someone their life. And Michael bumped into a... Hmm... Old friend? Historical figure file number 87JQ4HC. Yushri El Shakur. A young man in his early 20s, Yushri is kind, caring, and always eager to help those in need. And if you met him on the street, Yushri would be the first to converse with you or help you find your way. Living in 1250s Baghdad has its advantages, and for Yushri that advantage is practicing philosophy while gaining enlightenment from others at the House of Wisdom. haven't. Quit pestering me. There are more places in this world than the East. I find it hard to believe that someone as traveled as yourself has never seen many of the roads to the East. I was not impressed with the few places I had seen in the West, but the East. As a young man, I found myself in Bukhara once, and it was difficult for me to think of a time during that. Europe isn't filled with only hovels and villages. There are tons of worthy places there. Look for them and you can find them. Uh, Fayyad? What, what about Bukhara? My pardon. It's shameful to see children running around the street without shoes. In the wealthiest city in the world... What does it say about us wearing finery while our children play in rags in the street? It shows that wealth doesn't go around. The prophet, peace be upon him, spoke that a man is not a believer whose stomach is filled while his neighbor goes hungry. I am wealthy still and have a large home and servants. It seems that by caring about my people and being fortunate under Allah, I have made myself a hypocrite, wouldn't you say? No. Charity is a bad concept. And there you go, making assumptions again. You do not need to spare me by rebuking the concept of charity. I mean it. Charity is a patch to problems governments should be fixing. I know for certain hunger kills more people than any foreigner with a sword. There is some truth in what you say, but charity is more than what it fixes. I do pray that the caliph turns his focus away from the pleasures of his palace. May he turn to Allah for guidance on how to run his empire. But not all prayers are answered. Yeah. Uh, I want to say uh, uh, that I'm sorry, in general. I didn't want to upset you. You have nothing to apologize for. It is my home, and it is ill. I cannot be upset with you for acknowledging one of its symptoms. There will be nothing like this home again. I soon mourn Baghdad. Fayyad, I want to take you out to dinner. You've stomached me more than most people, and you shouldn't be left like this. Uh you have coin? I have everything you have back home. 
Don't get me started on that. It has been much longer than a few moments. Wouldn't your companions worry about you? No, they're likely still working through their childhood traumas by being petty with each other. They're old enough to work through their problems on their own. So? I do not believe I have been offered dinner by a woman before. But you are an interesting woman. I have to drop off my things at my room. Come with me. As you wish. Marie. Oh, my Marie. Why have you not checked in with me? I need to know that you're okay. Marie? Marie, are you there? My lord? My people are done here. What are you talking about? There is no dark magic going on here. I just want to help her. Frau Tropia, I don't know what kind of evil demon this is, but I suspect it has no interest in assisting us. My lord, please help me! Make this stop! I will, my sweet Marie. I will. At last, our navigator has remembered where she rests. Our fasts may soon end. <laughs> I'm allowed to be distracted. It's a big place with too many winding roads. For a guide, you sure do become distracted quite often. That's not fair. When you see a dancing bear in a park, you stop and see what's happening. That's the law. Now you care about the law. You're annoying. <laughs> Perhaps. Sit down somewhere a minute. Uh, once I'm done cataloging these books, we can go. You do seem to have quite a few. Where did you get them? I stole them from the House of Wisdom. <laughs> you are humorous. I try. Lying is fun. It is simple to acknowledge your studiousness, Theodora, but I could not help noticing your care of the books. I might burn them later. I doubt that. I have seen the ways the Jewish monks treat the books they themselves have inscribed, and yet they do not hold the covers with gentle hands as you do. Slow, but deliberate. You do not scrape the covers against each other. Well, the jig is up. Before you ask, it's a Greek expression. I take care of books back west, have for most of my life. I was taught at a young age to treat them with respect, and it's sort of stuck. You manage a bookshop? A library. I have a personal library at my estate, if you wish to see it. My work takes me to quite a few places, and with the coin I have, I've managed to purchase some treasures. Already trying to trick me back to your place? And here I thought you were a gentleman. I apologize for my ruse, but I also have a kitchen and staff back home. Forgive me, but if I have to follow you until you find a place to eat, I do not think I will make the journey. We can peruse my library while my servants cook us a surprise. Afterwards, perhaps we may have some honey dates or maxufa. I haven't had sugar since I got here. It's cruel of you to use that against me. I threaten with kindness and joyous times. <laughs> Let me grab something to wear. <sighs> Careful, though, Fayed. Your wife might be jealous. She would have been. She passed seven years ago. Oh, I I'm sorry. I should have been more considerate. Don't be. We had a wonderful life together. She has blessed me with two sons, who have blessed me with grandchildren. I am at peace. That sounds nice. Where are your sons now? My oldest boy and his family reside in Tana. 
I have not seen him for some time. My youngest helps me manage my ships from Basra. May I? Of course, please sit. It is your bed, after all. Do you have any family? My brother. We, my family, don't talk about him anymore. But when I'm dusting off a shelf or looking up at the ceiling like this, I think about how he is doing. Sometimes even how my nieces are doing. Even less so how my nephew is doing. But sometimes even that disgrace. I understand. In the markets, before I send a caravan off to Basra, I wonder what of these many splendors will my son see? Which of these commodities will catch his eye when he receives them? He may pick out a jewel or a fabric for my granddaughter. I miss my sons terribly, but they are grown men now. Are you married? No, never have been. I was close a few times, but nothing came out of it. It would seem to me that they missed out on a good deal. <laughs> you have no idea what you are talking about, but you act like you do so confidently. I'm seeing a pattern. Please, do not start another argument. I barely survived the last one. Are you ready to head out? Almost. Can we stay like this for a bit longer? It's nice. Yes, if that is what you wish. <laughs> Daphne, you got your ears on? What's up, Jarhead? I'm a little busy with this mission and dealing with rogue agents. Sounds like you're outside. Please tell me that you have that intern with you. You can't be walking those streets by yourself. I wish I could say yes, but he basically just quit on me. What? Long story. I don't really have time to get into it right now, but I'm sure everything will be just fine. He needs time to cool down. Do I need to contact him and verbally put my foot in his door? Whoa there, Tiger. Right now, that would not help the situation. Besides, you called me up for something. What's up? Yeah, I wanted to thank you for giving me the heads up about our new chef. It was so nice bumping into her at the new mess hall. <laughs> I was wondering when the two of you were going to cross paths. I'm sure she was excited to see you. She ran off to go put in a complaint to Isaac without me even getting to order my barbecue wings. Speaking of Isaac, I don't really remember him being around all that much before. And now it's like he's in charge. I hear you. Everything seems to be a bit off lately. This intern is acting like we're the best of friends, and my giving him a hard time is coming out of nowhere. And another thing, why does it seem that no one is concerned about where Murphy is? Ah, crap, I have to go. Stephanie just came by and said there's a fresh batch of cookies in the mess hall. Maybe I can compliment Autumn and try to make some inroads with her. We'll catch up when you get back. Welcome back. I brought more candles and lamp oil from the market this morning. Thank you. You're such a dear. How much do we owe you? Nonsense. Take what you need. But please do leave some for the other patrons. Of course. And we very much appreciate your hospitality. By any chance, has the man I'm normally with come back here yet? I apologize, but I haven't noticed him if he has. He might have come back while I was on my errands. Well, thank you anyway. <laughs> Madam... All peoples whose minds are open to it eventually receive clarity. All ripped things can be mended. Thank you. Good night. Kalinikta. Who does she remind me of? What happened here? Were we robbed? 
No, no, no. Okay, think. What are you going to do? You better be all right, you old crone. Barely touched your drink. Demba? Yeah, uh, wild story. Huh. Oh, well, here I was, convinced that it was a civilized talk. I didn't think my theories of the heavenly bodies were that morbid. <laughs> no, I'm... I'm distracted, that's all. Please, keep going. Oh, we are dreamers. No shame in being captured by a dream. It's, it's nothing like that. Then what has captured your mind? Nothing. Let's talk about something else. Well, you have put me in quite the position. I haven't had to decide what to converse with you before. Well, this thing that clearly bothers you is what I would like to hear. Uh, let me think of something else. Hmm. We can speak more on astronomical phenomena, which you found both distracting and morbid, mind you. Perhaps something more grounded, like the law interpretations that my uncle passes judgment on. Okay, okay, I get your point. I didn't think you'd be able to help, that's all. As you say, try me. See, I am beginning to understand your vocabulary. I am a smart man and wise behind my years, humble and knowing of all things. <laughs> all right, Solomon. How do you get a woman to see you as a man, like a grown man, instead of some kid? Uh, is there a woman you have your eye on? A fair damsel past the Red Sea? No, no, nothing like that. Let's just... Forget I even asked. Well, calm yourself. I am only teasing. But honestly, I don't know the answer to your question. They sometimes do, and they sometimes don't. Thanks, I guess? Demba, if it helps you, I think I understand. When I was younger, this woman was set to marry my older brother. I spent much time speaking with her when she visited our home. She has warm eyes. You see, I always carried a bag of questions. She would answer my questions about the colors of the sky. Though I suspect it was just to humor the family of her suitor. I was quite fond of her. When she married my brother, I would walk with her to the market or to anywhere, really. All of this while my brother worked. She would lick her thumb and wipe the dirt off my face. I hated it. One day at the market, we were picking up almonds, and the merchant wanted more dinars than they were worth. I was sure of it from what my father taught me. I argued with the merchant for playing us for fools. I threatened him, and he sold it to us at a fairer price. I remember seeing something in the way that she looked at me. It could have been my imagination. But I can't remember a time since then that she wiped the dirt from my cheeks. I hope that helps. It does. A little. I think. Stand up for yourself. Then I think it should change from there. I hope so. I don't want to hear it. Theodore is missing and we have to find her. How did you find me? You don't go anywhere else. Where else would you be? I spent too long dipping into alleys to get here. If your friend is in trouble, I would like to help. That's sweet of you, but we have it handled. Kaun, your tree knows the city better than any of us. It's not good protocol to get locals involved in our missions. Daphne, you know we need him if the librarian is in trouble. Three sets of eyes are better than two. We can't. This could be dangerous, and if something happens, it will change the timeline. It wouldn't change the timeline more than leaving Theodore behind during a siege. <sighs> if 
you want him to come so badly, then fine. He can come, but he's your responsibility. Let's go. Please forgive my intrusion. We just returned in the middle of the night, and you need to see this right away. What is this? This is my squad's debrief. However, we left out one detail. Oh? And what might this be? Shortly after I gained command over the Norway Shadow Mission, Agents Michael and Daphne tried to steal the set stalker from Eric the Red, but they were cornered inside a hut. Aside from the sounds of a scuffle inside, there was a distinct sound of a gunshot. I despise those that make assumptions. I suggest you choose your next words carefully. I am not assuming, sir. There was a gunshot, and here is the thirty-eight caliber casing that we located. This violates every one of our codes of conduct during time travel. Did they not know the ramifications this could have? I have my squad on standby. We're ready to apprehend both of them and charge them for their crimes. We only need your approval. No. No. Leave this one to me. There will be no movement from you or your team on this matter moving forward. Yes, sir. As for Shadow One, I would like to know what happened in his final hours. He said he didn't want to feel the effects of chronicitis, and had decided to find his way to Valhalla. He was already exhibiting symptoms, but I don't think he noticed. He challenged any man, woman, or child to send him to the gods. Most laughed, until someone finally answered his challenge. He cut him down easily. It was like he snapped. He was a madman. He couldn't be stopped. He defeated three others before the oracle claimed to be speaking for the gods. She told him that Tyr had given him the strength of a mighty beast, and his way into Valhalla would be beyond the woods. Without hesitation, he ran into the forest, sputtering nonsense. The steersman sent others to follow him, giving specific orders not to interfere, and to bring him home when he had completed his journey. When did they return? Two days later. What did they report? They brought back the spoils of a great hunt. The beasts he defeated were fed to the village. His final battle had come in the form of a bear. He was wounded severely, but was somehow victorious. <laughs> Unfortunately, he was immediately attacked by a pack of wolves. They attacked him from behind. It was like they waited for the winner, then went for the kill. Where is the body? The steersman ordered a ship burial with him and the bear, giving Shadow One a high honor for sending the village a feast prior to entering Valhalla. A fitting end to a true Viking. Who else knows of these events? Just me and my squad. How was Shadow Four? I kept him busy, so he has no idea that any of this has transpired. Good. He is not to be made aware of this situation. I will talk with him directly soon. You will tell no one of this, do you understand? And what about the rest of his family? That is for me to address. Focus on your squad and stand by for your next assignment. I'm expecting to hear something from the boss very soon. Until then, get some rest. Yes, sir. Can someone light a candle or something? Give me a second. <sighs> That's better. Wow. This place is a mess. Ow! This is serious. I was worried that this was how you normally live. When I came in, it looked like this. Theodora didn't come back into the House of Wisdom, so I assumed she made it back here. You didn't think to look for her? I was upset. 
and she loves to hide away in her book piles. I assumed she was sniffing lint from the medical texts. Ugh. Anyone see her come back? The owner told me she saw her before she left on her errands. We have a dirty room and no witnesses. What now? Let's try to figure out what happened here. Your door doesn't seem to have any damage. Your assailant could have snuck in. The door has a lock on it. There's no other way they could have come in here. She opened the door. Demba, look for her key. Check under the bed. If it's not here, then she has it on her. If you say so. Assume she was here when the door opened. Yusri, come here. You're trying to kidnap me. What do you do? Hmm. I grab you here and pull you through the door. They had to come in. Look at this mess. (sighs) Why am I digging through this stuff? That's a good point. There could have been multiple people here. The men came in and attacked her. They picked her up and took her away while the owner was out. That doesn't make sense. The bed is messed up. Theodora's luggage is everywhere. The old lady is weirdly fast, but I don't think she'd be strong enough to resist multiple people. It looks like a struggle. I found something. She was attacked here. I don't see clothes being dragged here. I don't get why she would look into her bag for a weapon. I f- I Maybe there was another something. guy that looked through her things after the struggle, but it doesn't look right to me. I don't know why the bed would be messed up like that if the kidnappers were just looking for books or jewels. There's a certain way these things look. They could have easily found our dinars, but they're still here. You have experience with this kind of situation. It happens a lot back home. I found something. I am sorry to hear that. These are dangerous times. Don't worry about it. I found something. Huh? I found this robe behind the bed. It feels pretty soft. One moment. This seems to be from a more expensive piece. Look at its texture. I believe it is Chinese silk. A rich guy did this? That would be likely. Only a few people in the city would tailor work with a fabric like this. Impressive work. At least it's something. There is a signature here. This came from Jalisat's shop. Who's that? A tailor my father purchases from. The wealthy tend to know each other, and I can sense that this is his. Sense? Not that I don't believe you, but we don't have time to waste. It may be difficult to understand, but each artisan has their own personal touch on what they make. I look at the stitching pattern inside the sleeve, and it reminds me of the boastfulness of Jolly Sat. He made little shapes here because he likes to gloat about his, uh, prowess. Maybe we bring the guards into this? That wouldn't be a good idea. Well, it is their job. I agree with your companion. I'd rather not send the guards to my friend's shop. Yusri, we'll meet you outside in a moment. We have to find some things. We are going at this hour? I guess so. Jolly Sats might be closed at this time. We'll be out in a minute. While I grab my tools, I want to say thanks for helping, but I am not apologizing for what I said today. You apologize? Who would expect that? Don't worry. When we get back, I'll hand in my two weeks so you won't have to deal with me anymore. I... You know what? We'll talk about this later. For now, though, I need you to trust me. I can't have you undermine me to your friend when we are out there. I haven't. Not yet. Remember when we are. My voice doesn't carry any weight here compared to yours. I need you to say you'll trust me, at least for the rest of the time here. I'll trust you. Okay. I have what I need. Let's go. Yeah, okay. Let's go. (laughs) 
Hey, look, I can finally wiggle my feet. The doctor tells me I'll be up and rolling around shortly. What do you mean by rolling around, Philippe? Well, dear chef of ours, it would seem that I'm likely going to be in a wheelchair for a bit while I undergo physical therapy. Wait, they're going to let you roll up and down these hallways under your own control? Hot. There's no need to be rude. Just because I drove over that intern's foot a few cycles ago does not mean anyone is in danger. Well, working in the kitchen, I always make sure to wear non-slip, metal-toed shoes. I've heard too many stories of cooks dropping a knife and losing a toe. Oh, my. That sounds like it would be a very unfortunate situation indeed. Better a toe than a finger as a cook, I suppose. Wow, that is pretty on point for you. I guess you really must be feeling better. <sighs> How much farther is this place? Jolly such shop is not much farther. I hope this isn't a dead end. Foreigners of little faith, Jolly Shot will not let us down. And if he does, Allah will not. This is the place. It, it doesn't look open. What's that on the door? It is a sign. What does it say? It says... Hmm. Jolly Shot is traveling to Medina. It doesn't say when he will be back. Great. The only lead we have is somewhere in the desert. Are you sure it was his work? It escapes me if any others have this touch in their craft. The city has many tailors, but I'm confident it is his. Tell me if someone's coming. What are you doing? Don't mind me. Let her do her thing. I don't think we thought this through. There could still be a bunch of clues left around the inn. The owner didn't see anything, and I trust that she is an honorable woman. Honorable people lie all the time. I mean, they don't always know they're lying. Sometimes people don't remember things the first time you ask them. Honorable people do not lie. It is what makes them honorable. I do not expect all people to speak the truth. But Demba, were you not able to read the sign on the door? I thought you said you were a translator. I can read. You were closer to the door, and I've been reading the past couple of days, nonstop. Hmm. And I choose to believe you. I assume you are an honorable man. Until I am proven otherwise. I'm just saying. We could have overlooked something. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Come on, you two. That was fast. Miss... I apologize, but I cannot allow the burglary of a friend's shop. Quiet down. We aren't going to steal anything. We're going to find a name in his ledgers. Now, get inside before a guard passes by. Theodora could be in danger. I don't like it either, but it's what we have to work with. I can't in good conscience agree with this. I didn't expect you'd support this kind of action. I promise we won't steal anything. I don't like that it is open to the elements. I will take your promise, but please tell me this is a rare occurrence. Definitely. If it makes you feel any better, I've never seen it do this before. It does not. Where do we look? Desks or cabinets. Wherever a ledger would be. I remember he would come out of the back room when he greeted my father. Good place to start as any. Kaun, I found a keyhole in this desk drawer. Did you find the key? Can't you open it? Of course I can, but I won't be able to lock it again. This is a learning opportunity. Usually, keys are placed somewhere in the shop close to the keyhole, but hidden away. We might get lucky. Did she say usually? There's something in this room that would get more attention than other things, like 
that plant pot over there. Watch and learn. What am I supposed to learn? Shut up. If you're so smart, then you find it. I'm joking around. What about that? Found it. It was behind the tapestry. There was a lip in the wall covered by it. Are you going to stand there or open it? I'm going, I'm going. There it is. Yusri, can you help me see if we find something useful here? As you wish. Is there anything I can do? You're not too burned out to read? Ha ha, very funny. Hemmings? Fittings? This was a complete piece. It should say so. There it is. Imported silk robe. Hamza Tawid al-Salik. That may be a problem. Why? He is a hermit. I've only heard rumors, but he was once a great physician in Baghdad. Then he went to Jerusalem and returned months later, half starved to death on a donkey, muttering that Allah's eye had revealed to him the mysteries of the mind and the wisdom behind the clouds. Now I want to meet him. If we ask a few beggars, I think they would be able to point us to him. If we have the dinars. Okay, are we done here? Now we are. With everything back in its place, it's like we were never here. Except for the broken door lock. Except for the broken door lock. I pray no soul notices the door is open. We have enough to pay for a replacement. One step at a time. Lead the way. Let's talk some more about with whom you have decided to associate. Why? We talked about Philippe. Let's leave my team out of this. This is between us. We want to know more about your associate, your team. How about this time we discuss one of your agents? I guess I can start with Michael? Will you start with Michael? Yes, I'll start with Michael. Tell us about your Michael. Well, as of now, speaking of now, where are, better yet, when are we? Irrelevant. Oh, my apologies. Michael, right. <clears throat> Michael is currently my longest tenured agent and might be the hardest working agent I've ever had. He's the type that will do whatever it takes to complete a mission. How did you meet this Michael? I found him working a dead-end job, which was no place for a veteran with his skill set. Veterans? Those are former warriors? That is correct. As I was saying, I found Michael, so I offered him the chance of a lifetime. He turned out to be one of the greatest additions to my team. Upon joining the team, his dedication to the job was off-putting to some of the more seasoned agents. I actually found it somewhat endearing. Do you see him as a leader? He has potential to be, but needs to work on his interpersonal skills. He's fine around the facility, but in the field, he's lacking. If you have to talk to people, well, let's just hope he has someone else with him. But if something goes awry, he's the one you want around. That is enough on Michael. For now. This episode was written by Sebastian Andrade, Ashley Dean, James Devro Lewis, Tyrus Rayner, and Mark Helton. This episode featured the voice talents of Kirsty Harrison as Murphy, Jenny Helton as Daphne, Shandon Loring as Michael, Mark C. Helton as Gleason, Tyrus Rayner as Isaac, Carrie Hampton as Hart, Quinn Cafarata Jenkins as Philippe. Kaz Chandler as The Librarian, James Devereaux Lewis as Intern 2, Caitlin Cole as Autumn, with Anita Kelly as Sylvia, Laura Landry as Marie, 
Michelle Calhoun as the interrogator, Havish Ravapati as Yusri El Shakur, Brian Murphy as Fayad Bari Al Ashad, Catherine Hampton as the inn owner, Cassandra as the shadow leader, and I'm Connor Howard, your announcer. This series is developed and proudly produced by 97 to Now Productions. For more information about the show, please visit our website. Tune in next time as Murphy's Inc. continues.